This is Dragon's Den. Welcome to Dragon's Den, where would-be tycoons attempt to sell themselves and their ideas to five of the country's toughest and most successful business people. What the inventors and fledgling entrepreneurs are looking for is an investment that will take their idea to the next level and hopefully start them on the road to success. What our five dragons are looking for is a product with the potential to be really big and a person with the right combination of drive and ambition. Let's see if our first young candidate has what it takes. Tipperary man Eddie O'Brien is looking for €75,000 in exchange for 15% of his company. Up till now, Eddie has made his living working as an electrician, but feels he has all the right credentials to be a successful entrepreneur. Hello, uh, my name is Eddie O'Brien and I come from Tipperary. My parents have been self-employed for as long as I can remember, and that upbringing has instilled in me the drive to work hard and to create my own successful business. And this is my invention, the Hangout. It's for people with wet clothes and high electricity bills. It provides a stylish solution to an everyday problem. I intend to sell the Hangout in Ireland and in the UK, where it rains on average 190 days per year. An average load in a tumble dryer costs the customer one euro and eight cent on their electricity bill. If used once daily, their initial investment of 1,500 euros will be returned to them within four years. The Hangout is guaranteed for 10 years, saving the customer 2,000 euros over the lifetime of the product. And that's not even mentioning the fact that clothes dried in a tumble dryer only last a fraction as long as clothes that are dried naturally. So why am I here? From you, the Dragons, I need seed capital of 75,000 euros in exchange for 15% equity in my business. And why should you invest in the Hangout? I'll tell you why. The Hangout is design registered and patent pending. As you can see here, it's an ideal centerpiece for any garden and it can be used as a gazebo for when the sun shines. Thank you for your time and I invite your questions. A confident start from Eddie. But as we've already seen in the series, a well-prepared pitch can quickly come unstuck in the face of the dragon's questioning. Gavin Duffy begins today's interrogation. Hi, Eddie. How are you doing, Doc? Uh, my name is Gavin. Have you done any uh, washing and of clothes yourself and hanging them out? Oh, I have, yeah. I've um, been researching this product for, for the last few years, and we've had one even for years before that, just a covered area. When you put clothes out in the line, what are your two biggest concerns? Uh, that they dry is number one. Mm. And um, that you, when, you, when you want to take them in, that they are dry, that'd be the biggest concern. Yeah, another big concern, Eddie, would be that um, bird droppings. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, birds like shelter. So you have created an absolutely fantastic, but quite large birdhouse here with uh, nice little perches. So the birds, would, would they not go in land on uh, the strands there, do their droppings on the white shirt and the other clothes. I don't know why the birds don't land on it, but I do know for definite that they don't go in. Maybe it's the fact that the, the clothes or the clothes pegs, or maybe it's the fact that it's so low that they won't, they won't come within that arm's reach of people. But no, they don't, they do, they do not go in. So Eddie emerges relatively unscathed from his first skirmish. Although Gavin may be nervous about the birds' antisocial activities, it seems the other dragons may have a few more straightforward concerns. Tell me uh, about the, the product. How is it made or who manufactures the product currently? At the moment, I'm, I'm, I'm just coming out of the development stage. I've been, uh, up until now, I've manufactured them myself and tried them and tested them and brought them to the market. But um, once, once from now forward, I intend to outsource production. Eddie, tell me about the, the cost of manufacture of this. Currently, at this stage, I can produce them for uh, around 400 euros. That's labour and materials. Uh, going forward with proper outsourcing, yeah. I can, I've researched, I can get them manufactured for 150 euros. And what would you expect to sell this to the retailer for? My current business model is that I, um, sell, I, I, I manufacture the product and use the retailer as an agent, quite like the garden sheds. So the retailer gets uh, a 20% margin because they don't have to stock the product. 
Um, I will install the product, well not personally, but I have installers arranged. So I am selling direct to the customer using the retailer and the installers as subcontractors. The product retails to the customer at 1,500 euros. 1,500? Yeah. The, the retailer gets 300 euros. It's, it's an awful lot of money for a, for a washing line, isn't it? Well, it's not just a washing line. No, it's, I know that, yeah. yeah. But like when you look at what's out there in, say, Gazebo, in, for the other functions, yes, it's, it's, um, it's priced pretty premium. For something that's not teak, it's, it's not a hardwood. It's a, you have it here in a, in a softwood. Yeah, the software is treated, it will last for 15 years, but... I doubt it. Yeah, I understand, I, I, I appreciate that 1,500 euros is quite a lot, but um, I'm pricing it in between garden sheds and, and gazebos. The average gazebo, about 2,500 euros. Price is obviously going to be an issue in these recessionary times. Money is scarce these days and Sarah Newman needs to know what plans Eddie has for hers. If I gave you seventy-five thousand euro, what would you intend on doing with it? Firstly, I uh, need to arrange the outsourcing. I need to arrange the outsourcing of the installation and the manufacture. Uh, <clears throat> I've started this already, and to complete it will cost twenty thousand euros. Why will it cost twenty thousand euro? Uh, to get drawing specifications, travel, and uh, uh, over and back. To over and back to where? Where are you thinking of outsourcing um, it to? The, uh, my information at the moment is Malaysia would be the best place to get the cheapest product. Then um, I will invest thirty thousand euros in a, in, a, in the marketing campaign to get the product out on the shelves this spring. If you concentrate on the Irish market just right now, what do you think your sales potential is for the first year? I plan to sell five hundred units this year. At roughly. 1500 euros Roughly but you might tweak the price a little bit uh, depending yeah, that's, okay uh, fine that's that's uh that's a recommended retail price okay thank you what part of this is is patented um within regarding the intellectual property there's three aspects i can't patent uh, a clothesline a roof or a table and even the amalgamation of the three of them can't be patented but there are certain aspects of the construction and the manufacture that can be patented the second aspect of the intellectual property is um the name I have the name registered in, uh, here, here in Ireland. And thirdly, and my most powerful uh, claim is the design rights. The, nobody can do a, a direct imitation of it. I have them design rights Europe-wide. Eddie, I don't see you being in the clothesline business. I see you being in the garden furniture business. And I see that as a very crowded and very competitive environment. I also don't believe that the device that you have is uh, patentable. Um, the design rights you have, nobody can copy them 100%, but they can copy them 99%, which is exactly what's going to happen. Your designs are going to be replicated very rapidly by people who have more resources than you. So I'm out. Okay, thank you for your time. So Sean has weighed the evidence and decided to opt out. It's sometimes hard to tell how a pitch is being received in the den, but there still seems to be genuine interest in both Eddie and his product. How are you, Eddie? Uh, Bobby is my name. Hello, Bobby. Um, you haven't sold any today, is that right? You're only I've the... sold 25 of them today. You've sold 25, good man. Yeah. Who, who bought those? Um, I launched the product two months ago. Uh, it was as much uh, a launch as a, a develop, uh, market research, but I went to two shows, a trade show and an agricultural show. Right. And. Um, I sold most at the agricultural show, but it was... And did you get 1,500 euros for them? No, I didn't sell them. I was, at, at, I was selling them at, at 950 euros. Right. But I had to get them out there to, to get the feedback. Tell me a little about, a bit about Eddie, the person. What have you done with your career to date on that? Um, by trade, I'm an electrician. Right. I've worked at that for the last 15 years, primarily. I've done a bit of property development, but I got out of that. And, so you were right. Uh, I got out of a couple of years ago. I'm happy with that, all right. But uh, no, I, th I'm working. This is my, my, my new venture. I've been working on it for the last 12 months, primarily. That's, that's where, I okay. am, uh, where I am. Let me tell you where I am. I, I'm interested, Eddie, so I'm, I'm going to just uh, give you an offer. Um, I'd be willing to give you half the money uh, for 10% of the business. So maybe you might just reflect on that and Thank you very see much. where the conversation goes. 
Nervous moments for Eddie. He knows that unless he gets the full investment, he will walk away from the den with nothing. Are any of the other dragons still in the frame? Eddie, I think you're a super guy. I think you're just buzzing with energy. And uh, I think that I have the connections to get you up there and, and running. And I'll, I'll give you the other half that Bobby has offered uh, for the other 10%. Just to finish, Eddie, I've also got contacts in this area. I'm glad to hear it, but I'm, I'm here to sell today as a man says. Eddie's smiling now, and who could blame him? With his investment secure, it's now just a case of getting the best deal. Eddie, uh, you have great energy about this. I think it's going to exhibit very well. I think your sales forecasts, curiously, unlike a lot of people who come into the den, are pretty modest. I think somebody with your drive and energy uh, will achieve those sales uh, and that. So, uh, um, so I'm going to tell you where I'm at. Um, it's clear to me that uh, my fellow dragons, uh, Bobby and Niall, are obviously keen for that because you've left very little room for me guys to manoeuvre. Um, they've been generous. Uh, they're giving you 75,000 for 20%. No, I can't better that. So uh, I just have to be faster in the next time. Um, but uh, I'm out. No problem, thank you. So four dragons have decided, but there's still one left. Sarah has been quizzing Eddie tenaciously over his figures, but now, having had a look at the sums, will she decide to make an offer? OK, Eddie, so you've two out and you've two in, and me. What I think you have here is two fantastic partners. I'm not going to compete with these two uh, because I think they're going to help you enormously, probably more than I can. So I think you have a terrific future ahead of you. Um, thank you for coming in. Um, but I'm going to let the guys run with you because you have the 75,000 and that's what you came in for. So I wish you luck. Thank you very much. You're welcome. OK, Eddie, you have an offer from Niall and myself. Are you happy with that? Are you prepared to accept it? I am. Of course I am. Of course, Good I'm, man. I'm delighted and hopefully... Good man, well done. Good decision. Great. Good decision. Thank you very much. So. so, success for Eddie, but it seems fairly clear that his personality had a big part to play. You bought the person as much as the product. Did. No doubt. No doubt. No, and he'll work out. Yeah. He, he'll and be able to duck and weave huge. as he goes, and he'll be able to change his tack relative to what's happening He's in the He's an honest place. guy. Good luck with it, lads. Yeah, yeah. No, that's great. Eddie, firstly, congratulations. Oh, thank you very you much. You secured your €75,000 oh. investment uh, in return for a 20% stake in the company. How do you feel? Oh, I'm definitely happy. I'm definitely happy going forward. Now that the, with the, the lads' help, uh, I'll, I'll bring the, the hangout from, from, from local industry to nationwide and potentially going forward after that. When they put the offer on the table, it was for a little bit of a higher stake in the company than you had originally looked for. Were you tempted to, to hang out for the original stake, or did you think you'd, you'd, you'd go with the offer? No, at the end of the day, that's the offer was put in front of me, and that's, uh, I, I'm happy to take it. Well, congratulations again, Eddie. The very best of luck with it. Thank you very much. Coming up after the break. If I'm in a